Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about trying to emulate the bigger than my body sound, that adrenaline 3 pedal sound, uh, in the FM3. Check it out. So I love this song. I love John Mayer, obviously. Uh, this is a particularly weird effect. Uh, and I always wondered if I could try to emulate this in the XFX. Turns out some guy already did on YouTube. I'll, I'll link to his video. He did a great job uh, of basically figuring it all out. And I just kind of tweaked it a little bit, uh, tweaked a couple of things. So I'll show you kind of what's going on. When I first thought about trying to do this, um, I definitely wasn't thinking of a flanger. <laughs> um, this is definitely opening up something in my mind in terms of like what a flanger can do or is. Um, all of that squeakiness is the flanger. So basically what we've got here, we've got a flanger, um, we've got no rate, no tempo, the manual control attached to the sequencer is what's doing this work. So we change, we crank the attack and the release down. We crank the min time and the max time down. These there are specific values that seem to work for this. Um, and then something that I did that I tweaked, I tweaked the high cut down a little bit. It gets a little squeaky and I'll, let me just play a little bit of it for you now and you'll hear, hear, the, hear the difference. Um, oh, another thing that's very important, pickup position. This is going to sound weird, but uh, third position, I swear, I'll put my proof up on the screen right now. I have nothing more to say about that. Third position for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play this. And I have it set to start playing as soon as uh, I, I, I play, so you'll hear that. But I'm just going to tweak the high cut as I go, and hopefully you'll hear the difference uh, of what that's doing. Just taking down the squeakiness just a little bit. So here we go. So you can hear, I had it, I think roughly around 6K, somewhere around there. It just takes a little bit of the extra squeakiness off of that. And maybe that'll be different just with, you know, pickups and amps, whatever. Maybe you won't have so much of that. Um, that was my solution there. And that's why the flanger I have, I have split out here so that I could have some of my dry signal directly through not being colored by that high cut. And then I could just, just high cut, just the flange sound uh, a little bit. And so what have I done with this mixer? Well, I've got two scenes here. One, one is, is just that flange sound. So we were taking 100% flange straight through the mixer. Um, and, then, and then my second scene, if we switch to the second scene, what I was going for here is like, I'm just imagining maybe I'm in a trio. I've got bass and drums, I'm jamming with friends. We wanna jam this tune. Uh, and I've only got one guitar. On the record, it's obviously multiple guitars. And live, they use multiple guitars. And so John's just kind of, he's playing the chords, but he's mostly just getting that arpeggiator thing going on. Uh, and the most of the like juicy guitar parts are coming from the other players and the other tracks. And you can hear on the track that this thing becomes panned right as soon as they hit the chorus versus 
versus left. There's a straight guitar, a dry guitar uh, on the right. And so I kind of wanted to emulate that. And so this is just uh, mixing the two, the dry signal and the other signal. So that would be like for the pre-chorus or the chorus. So here's what that sounds like. <laughs> play the chorus. Sorry for the clams. And then we'd switch back um, to the to the first preset here for the chorus. I haven't gone through and fleshed out all the tones I would need for the whole song yet. I was mostly just concerned about that that big sequencer riff. So let's dive back into that. It's the flanger, and we've tied the manual control here to the sequencer. Um, so what is that set to? This is really the secret sauce of this whole sound. Um, if we look at the sequencer. Pause the video, screenshot this if you want it, or just download my preset or download the other guy's preset. Um, this is this is the magic. So so what is going on here? <laughs> let's let's break this preset for a second. I'm gonna take this off, and let's see what this manual control does. If I just play an E. You can hear it's not it's not it's not doing quite as much because it's not moving as quickly but you can hear the squeaking and so it's a combination of this high feedback and and squeaking that the flange back and you know up and down I don't really know what it's doing I need to learn up on this I just wanted to share what I learned um, that's what's creating this sound so definitely something to play with more um, and learn, you know, maybe some other, copy some other presets from the Adrenaline or whatever. Let me know in the comments, do you feel like I should buy an Adrenaline 3 and try to tone match this? Would that be an interesting video? Cause I'm very tempted to buy one. So please tell me to buy one. <laughs> but anyways, that, that might be uh, some fun. What else did I do here? Oh yeah, in, in the sequencers, if you go to controllers, go to controllers, uh, we go to run here. And this run control uh, is what starts it. So you could assign it to a foot switch and that would start the sequencer. Uh, what I have it assigned to, you edit modifier, is the envelope. And I've tweaked the parameters here so that it, it really ramps up very quickly and stays, it's mostly on. And so you'll watch if I play. It goes up and then it takes a while to come back down, about half a second. And the reason for that is uh, really for those, for the, the funkier parts, like the pre-chorus part, so that it doesn't start over. You've got that rest in there and you don't want the sequencer to restart while you're just taking a rest in the song. Um, but it comes on real fast, clicks right up, starts right away when you start playing. And that mostly works. Sometimes it's tricky. You gotta be real careful about just not making noise. Um, you could combat that a little bit by uh, since we're using the envelope follower, tweaking the threshold here. I found if I went too high, it didn't trigger. <laughs> uh, so it, there's a sweet spot in there. And and yeah, you just got to find it for your gear and your hands. Um, yeah, so that's really it. It's this flanger and this sequencer. The sequencer steps are the special sauce. You can kind of see if we look again, like you got to use all 32 stages. So when you first come up by default, it'll be stuck to 16 stages. You gotta say, crank that up all the way to 32. And then, yeah, just dial this in and you can see that little, you know, arpeggio at the end there. <sighs> Pretty cool. I never would have thought that this was a flanger. I've never used a flanger in this way. I've never used a flanger much at all, to be honest. So this surprised me, but I've been having a lot of fun today, just kind of jamming and, and uh, playing along with this. One thing that uh, you will find disappointing, I think, is that the track, on the record, if you're trying to play along with the record, is not to the grid. <laughs> it's definitely a live performance, and so I don't know. I don't know what they if they just beat matched somehow to what the adrenaline was doing, 
or if they just edited it after the fact. Not sure, but it's definitely not locked to a grid. Um, if it is, it's like 117 point something, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't find it precisely. Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, that, that is, uh, that's this. Let me know if you think this is cool. If you've tried to build this, maybe try to build it out of like a pitch block or something crazy like that. Um, but yeah, it's a flange, it's this crazy flange. And thanks to um, all the other people who have figured this out already, apparently there's a stock preset in the XFX3 that can do this called Adrenal Flange, which I've never used. Um, but anyways, here it is on the FM3. You can uh, trigger it with your hands and it's got this other this other scene for if you want to just jam and mix mix your dry guitar with it and, and try to do it in kind of a trio setting. So anyways, let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know if I should buy that Adrenaline 3 pedal and do that toe match if that would be interesting. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And remember, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm going to keep playing this. <laughs> Thank you.